Hello, in this video today, what we're going to do is replace this sky right up here with a much more interesting and vibrant sky, such as this one. So to do so, I'm going to do Control A to select it, Control C to copy it, and go back to this original image here, and can do Control V to paste it in. Now, you can see this isn't really going to work out so well, right? So let's get rid of that. I'm going to hit Undo or Control Alt Z. You can just undo that out of there. And I'm going to resize this image first, though. So I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, and we don't need it that large really at all. So I'll do 700 pixels wide, hit enter. And now it looks really small, but actually it's this large at 100%, not too bad. Uh, next thing I need to do is give some room. I want to make this look more like a, a portrait instead of a landscape. So I'm going to go up to Image, Canvas Size, and I'm going to press the down arrow, um, saying the image is here and any extra space, any more, you know, any more image is going to be towards the top. So let's change the height. So the width is about three inches. I'm going to change the height to, let's say, five inches. And I hit OK. And maybe that's a little too much. So let me show you how to crop it. So if I use this tool right here, I can just crop it. I'm going to click and drag over this area here. And then do image, crop. And it gets rid of some of that up there. OK, that looks pretty good right there. So let's try that again. I'm going to go back to this leg picture. I'm going to copy it, Control c Back to the, this picture here, Control v to paste. And that looks pretty good right there. So all I need now is I'm going to kind of position this where I think it would be. That looks fine there. And I can kind of turn off the layer and see if these mountains would show up. If I do, I could even scale this a little bit larger, kind of stretch it down just a bit. I'm going to go back to the background layer. And look, I can't click on it. And the reason for that is this needs to finish resizing. So if you go up to click on the selection tool here, it'll ask if you want to apply the transformation. You say yes. Basically, it's confirming that you want this scaled the way it is. Now, if I go to the background layer, I can turn off layer one here. Okay, you can turn this on and, all, on and off with the eyeball. What I need to do is make a selection of the sky here. So I'm going to use a quick select, just choose some of the sky here, and click up here as well. Basically, making sure all my dancing ants are in this area here. Then I can go back out to layer one, I can turn the eyeball back on, and from this point, I can do, um, oh, I'm sorry, I can go down here to the right side. And there's this option to do add a layer mask. I click that, and boom, there you go. That's pretty much it. But if you want to actually make it look a little better, a little more realistic, keep watching. So um, a couple things. What I notice is maybe the saturation really isn't the same. If I look at the mountains, they're not nearly as saturated as maybe the, the sky back here. Now, naturally, it should be less contrast and, and maybe a little lighter looking the farther you go out. So let's do a few of those things. So I'm going to click on the background here. And just to be safe, um, I like to always make a duplicate of the background. Because in case I want to go back to the original, I can. So I'm going to click on this background layer right here. And I'm going to do an adjustment on it. So I'm going to do hue and saturation. And if I only want to affect the layer below it, I can click this one right here. And what I'm going to do in there is maybe just turn up the saturation a little bit. I'm only looking at the mountains here for right now. So let's turn up the saturation. Now, you can see what difference it makes, basically. But if I'm only looking at the mountains, I think the mountains should be turned up maybe to 30, something like that. Um, you can also change the lightness and darkness. Um, I kind of want it to match the front, so I'm going to go down just a little bit as well. Now, I made this probably too saturated up front, but that's the great thing about these, um, these, uh, ma these layers here is because I can click right in this white area here. And if I choose black, I can kind of... Um, just kind of cover this up right here. And you'll see it's getting darker right here. I should probably make sure I'm at 100% opacity. I can go in here, and basically what this does, you can see this black bar right here now. Or if I like scribble all over, you can see it right here now. Um, basically, it's saying it's not affecting this, this hue and saturation. It's not affecting this area that's in black, so right there. So you can see now, if I go back to click on my hue and saturation right here, I can turn my saturation up and down, and it's only affecting the mountains now pretty much. Okay, So basically, I'm going to try to match those mountains to the foreground here or the sky. I think that looks pretty good right there. And again, I can mess the lightness or darkness of it as well. It's probably somewhere right in there. Looks pretty good. Uh, next thing I'll do is maybe change the, um, the brightness of it. Um, so I'm going to click on this background again, and I'm going to do brightness and contrast. And I'm going to turn the contrast up a little bit. 
And you can mess the brightness a little bit too. Now again, I only want to affect the layer immediately below it, right? So if I raise this up, it should only then affect where the, where the uh, hue and saturation is selected too. So it won't only affect this white area, I believe. Oop, see, it's actually affecting all of it. So let's go in here again, and I can use the brush right here and kind of make sure that it's not actually affecting these areas right here. All right, there we go. And I'm going to turn the brightness back down. And now I just need to make sure, again, all I did is add that black area there. Just need to make sure that when I adjust this brightness here, it's only affecting uh, the mountains. So I'd say that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so if you're happy with that, you can just leave it alone or you can get a little more picky. So I'm going to be a little more picky now and make sure that I also look at the... Uh, so I'm going to add a few clouds here. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. Just click down here. And it's. I'll put this layer actually um, just above the background. Okay, because I don't want it to affect the clouds. I want it just to affect the land here. So what I'm going to do is grab a brush that would match clouds. If you actually scroll down, you should have other options. And some of these kind of look like a cloud, so I'm just going to use this one right here. And right now it's pretty small, so if I use my brackets to make it a little bit bigger, or you can use this size thing right here. I'm going to make it quite large. Like, that's even probably a little too small. Just kind of depends what area you're going to use it at. Um, and what I can do is, right now you can see I have blue selected, like a really dark blue. Um, and actually that kind of looks okay because, you know, the light coming through it. You can choose black as well, though. But... You can kind of just like add it in spots. Like that's obviously like way too much, right? So I'm going to change that layer to, um, let's do darken, see if that works for us. And you can also change the opacity of it and turn it way down. Um, but again, I can make this larger and like choose an area and you can kind of see it gives a texture to it. And I can turn this on and off. And you can kind of see like, oh, maybe some clouds over overhead is putting some texture to it as well. Um, Let's try changing that all the way to black, though. And, again, you're not going to be on normal. You're going to be on darken or multiply. We could try uh, color burn as well and see what that looks like. Like, obviously, that's way too much again, so I can turn, the, turn down the opacity of that. Um, you know, you could do the smaller areas and stuff like that. You could try, like, different brushes or whatever. Um, maybe you have, like, a little cloud right down here, whatever else. Okay, and if you don't like that, that's fine. You can always just take that layer and dump it in the trash. But uh, it depends if, you know, how realistic you want. Since it's on a separate layer, I can also use my race tool. I don't really like this area here that was done. And I can just kind of take that one out. Um, turn your race all up to 100% if you want to get rid of it completely. Um, and you can also make sure you can change the hardness of your brush. So I want a very soft brush, so I'm going to go to zero. And I'm going to kind of just go in here and make some areas a little bit softer. So I don't mind a little bit of clouds in that area over there or maybe along the field here. That looks just fine. So yeah, so there's a the complete image and uh, give it a try. Mess around with your brightness and contrast and hue and saturation uh, to make things look believable. Good luck.